All right, Drake Riggs here with the scrap with the champion, the one and only featherweight champion of Bellator. Literally, the one and only Bellator featherweight champion, Julia Budd. There's only been one. Julia, huge moment here, big fight. Obviously, you've had some big ones, but I mean, this is one of the biggest featherweight fights of all time, if we're being totally honest. Has that kind of moment sunk in, or do you, do you think about it that way? Yeah, I do. It's, uh, it sunk in a long time ago when I first... Uh, got the call and, and knew it was going down, it sunk in then, and um, I'm just so blessed to be here and, and uh, you know, and I can't wait to go out and show the world what I'm going to do. Of course. And you know, this fight was kind of one that was talked about back in the day, right, for Invicta a little bit. Yeah. So, the timing now, I think, per is perfect, personally, but I also think that you know, it kind of favors you. Do you agree? Because at the time, well, obviously, you've gone on to become champion now, gained so much more experience. So, the timing wise perfect you know for anticipation and build up and everything but for you it kind of leans in your favor in my opinion yeah i think so it's the perfect time um everything happens for a reason and this is the perfect time and um in 2014 when scott coker uh you know became, came over to bellator and taught they they called us about the 145 division it was a no-brainer for me to sign with bellator um and leave invicta it had nothing to do with chris cyborg but the fight i was offered against her was on two weeks notice because her opponent got injured in 2013 and it was like no no yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> if i'm going to train for her and and prepare to fight her it's going to be on yeah my terms as well exactly exactly worked out <laughs> and you know the thing with cyborg i think uh, it's fair to say, you know, a lot of her opponents, let's say at featherweight, they've been, you know, if they're not true featherweights, like you're a true featherweight, maybe not as experienced. And then some of them you can argue undersized bantamweights and such. But with you, true featherweight, you got the size to match, plus the experience now. Do you think that that's a pretty big factor compared to, you know, past opponents? She's it is, it is, but I lost to two 135ers in my career, right? So that being said, that being said, um, it's, uh, those were my only two losses and, and it's such a close weight division. I don't think that it, you know, I don't want to downplay any of her opponents, if that makes sense. So, you know, yeah, they're all tough girls that get in there and pour their heart and soul into the game. And um, at the end of the day, I just know that I've studied her and I've watched every single one of her fights and, and I'm ready for this. Yeah, and like I said, only champion in featherweight history in Bellator. Do you like the championship pressure? Is that something you think about, kind of motivates you at all, or is it just whatever? It is what it is, and, and um, I would way rather be here than be not the champ. And so I feel like, I feel like there's always a target on your back, whether you're the champ or the challenger or the whatever, and I, I'm very comfortable at the top. And I think it was before your fight with Olga, you know, it seemed like you couldn't find a fight for a little bit. It was like, hey, where's my challengers, you know? So I'm just curious, you want to be more active going forward. Have you thought about or have you gotten that activity clause like Ryan Bader's got where he's like, hey, I'm guaranteed these many fights? <laughs> um, yeah, I have. And uh, Bellator is doing a fantastic job with signing the 145ers and bringing in new people and new exciting fights. And um, they're doing a great job. So uh, and I'm doing my job. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and during that time, uh, you know, you said you'd be willing to fight Gabby Garcia in Horizon. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. Send me to Rise and let me fight Gabby. But, you know, that was all fun. And that was fun for till this happened. And yeah, then I was course. like, this is the fight to yeah, make. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. And let's do it right away. So is that something you'd still be willing to do, though, like a Ryzen? Maybe not Gabby, necessarily, but Ryzen fights, you know? Um, definitely. I mean, I watched the, we watched uh, the December yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryzen fights, and just, it looks so exciting in there, in that arena, and it, the, how everyone's so quiet yeah. and respectful, and, like, watching the sport and how they're, it's just a different vibe. My husband fought in Japan as well, so that's a dream, that would be a dream, you know, for me to fight over there. Yeah. What do you think of the rule set? You know, a little bit different. Does that be different. fun to play with? Yeah, I love I love a little bit of extra. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, so. awesome.